hello all right welcome again everyone welcome welcome we are going to be reading the story the two grandmothers written by olive senior this one is written by this one is um by a little girl all right so let's start and see what she has to say about her two grandmothers mommy you know what grandma Dell has baby chickens yellow and white ones she made me hold them and i help her gather eggs but i don't like to go out the back alone because the turkey gobbler goes gobble 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 after my legs he scares me and mr sunson next door has baby pigs i don't like the mother pig though grandma lives in this pretty little house with white lace curtains at all the windows mommy you must come with me and daddy next time and you can peek through the louvers. Grandma calls them jealousies. Isn't that funny? And you can see the people passing by. But they can't see you. Mommy, why can't we have lace curtains like Grandma Del so we can peek through? Nobody ever goes by our house. Except the gardeners and the maids. And people begging and Rasta selling brooms. Many, many people go by Grandma Del's house. They all call out to her. And Grandma Del knows everyone. My special friend is Miss Princess, the postmistress, who plays the organ in church. She wears tight skinny dresses and her hair piled so on her head and she walks very slow and everybody says she is sweet on Mr. Blake who is the new teacher and he takes a service in church when Parson doesn't come and then Miss Princess gets so nervous she mixes up all the hymns. Minister Mark came to fix Grandma's roof, and Grandma said, Poor man, poor man, all the time. Minister Mark's daughter, Eula Lee, and Irma Dean are big girls at high school in town, though Yuma Lee fell, and they don't know what is to be done. Mommy, why are they so worried that Eula Lee, Lee fell? She didn't break her leg or anything for she is walking up and down past the house all day long and look perfectly fine to me. Mommy, I really like Grandma Dell's house. It's nice and cozy and dark and cool inside with these lovely big picture frame frames of her family and daddy has a baby and daddy has a little boy and daddy on the high school football team. The one man in cup that year grandma says, did you know that mommy? and daddy at university and a wedding picture of daddy and you and me as a baby and all the pictures you send grandma every year but those are the small pictures on the side table with the lovely white lace tablecloth in the picture frame on the wall there is great grandpa Dell with a long beard and whiskers he is sitting down in a chair and grandma great grandma is standing behind him and then there is a picture of grandma herself as a young lady with her hair piled high like Miss Princess and her legs crossed at the ankles. She looks so lovely. But you know what, mommy? I didn't see a picture of daddy's father. And when I asked grandma, she got mad and shooed me away. She got even madder when I asked her to show me her wedding picture. I only wanted to see it. Mommy, do you know that grandma sends me to Sunday school? We stay over for a big church and I walk home with her and all the people. It's so nice. Only person comes to church in a car. Mommy, did you go to Sunday school? I go with Joyce, a big girl next door, and Grandma made me three dresses to wear. She says she cannot imagine how a girl child, that's me, can leave home with nothing but blue jeans and t-shirts and shorts and not a single church dress. She has this funny sewing machine, not like Aunt Thelma's. She has to use her feet to make it go, just like the organ in church. Miss Princess pumps away with her feet to make it give out this lovely sound and works so hard you should see her. And the first time I went to Grandma's church, I was so scared of the bats. The church is full of bats, but usually they stay high up in the roof. But as soon as the organ starts playing on Sunday, the bat starts swooping lower and lower, and one swoop so low I nearly died of fright and clutched Grandma Dell so tight my hat flew off. 
Did I tell you grandma made me a hat to wear to church with her own two hands? She pulled apart one of her old straw hats, leghorn, she said, and made me a little hat that fit just so on my head with a bunch of tiny pink flowers. Grandma didn't send it with me, though, or my Sunday dresses. She says she will keep them till I return, for she knows that I am growing heathenish in town. When Grandma dresses me up for church, I feel so beautiful in my dresses. She made with lace and bows and little tucks, so beautiful, and my hat. I feel so special that my own grandma made these for me with her own two hands and didn't buy them in a store. Grandma loves to comb my hair. She says it's so long and thick and she rubs it with castor oil every night. I hate the smell of castor oil, but she says it's the best thing for hair and after a time I even like the smell. Grandma Dell says my skin is beautiful like honey and all in all I am a fine brown lady and must take, make sure to grow as beautiful inside as I am outside. But mommy, how do I go about doing that? Nights at grandma's are very funny. Mommy, can you imagine there is no TV and it's very, very dark? No street lights or any lights? We go to bed early and every night grandma lights the oil lamps and then we blow them out when we are going to bed. You have to take a deep breath and every morning grandma checks the oil in the lamps and checks the shades. They have home sweet home written all around them. So beautiful. She cleans the shades with newspapers. She says when I come next year I'll be able, you know, I'll be old enough to clean them all by myself. Grandma knows such lovely stories. She tells me stories every night. Not stories from a book, you know, mommy. The way you read to me. But stories straight from her head. Really? I am going to learn stories from Grandma so when I am a grown lady, I will remember all those stories to tell my children. Mommy, do you think I will? Mommy, you know Grandma Elaine is so funny. She says I'm not to call her Grandma anymore. I'm to call her Towser, like everybody else, for I'm growing so fast, nobody would believe that she could have such a big young lady for her granddaughter. I think it's funny. I'm practicing calling her Towser, though. She is still my grandmother. I said to her, Grandmother, I mean Towser. Grandma Dell introduces me to everyone as her granddaughter. She calls me her little grand. And Grandma Elaine says, Darling, the way your grandmother Dell looks and conducts herself, she couldn't be anything but a grandmother. And honey, she and I are of entirely different generations. Grandma Elaine says such funny things sometimes. Like she was dressing to go out last night and she was putting on makeup and I said, Grandma, she was still Grandma then. I said, Grandma, you shouldn't paint your face like that, you know. It is written in the Bible that it's a sin. Grandma Del says so and I will never paint my face. And she says, Darling, with all due respect to your paternal grandmother, she's a lovely lady or was when I met her the one and only time at the wedding. And she has done one absolutely fantastic thing in her life, which is to produce one son, your esteemed father, one hunk of a guy. But honey, other than that, your grandmother Dell is a country bumpkin of the deepest waters. And don't quote her God damn sayings to me. Mommy, you know Grandma Elaine swears like that all the time. I said, Grandma, you mustn't swear and take the name of the Lord in vain. And I said, and she said, Honey child, with all due respect to the gray hairs of your old grandmother, and the first class brainwashing your daddy is allowing her to give you, I wish my granddaughter would get off my back and leave me to go to hell in peace. Can you imagine she said that? She's really mad that you allow me to spend time with Grandma Dell. She says, Honey, I really don't know what your mother thinks she is doing, making you spend so much time down there in the deepest, darkest country. I really must take you in hand. 
It's embarrassing to hear some of the things you come out with sometimes. Your mother would be better advised to send you to charm school next summer. You are never too young to start. Melody and next door went last year and it's done wonders for her. Turned her from a tomboy into a little lady. Though mommy, I can't I really can't stand Melody Ann anymore, you know. And your mother had better start to do something about your hair from now. It's almost as tough as your father's. And I warned your mother about it from the very start. I said, Honey, love's all right, but what about the child's hair? If you were my child, I would cut it right off to get some of the kinks out. Mommy, you won't cut off my hair, will you? Daddy and Grandma Dell like it just the way it is. What does Grandma Elaine mean when she says my hair is tough, Mommy? Anyway, Mommy, can I tell you a secret? Gran, I mean Towser, told me and says it's a secret, but I guess since you are her daughter, she won't mind if I tell you. Do you know that Towser has a new boyfriend? He came to pick her up on Sunday night. Remember I told you Joyce was staying up with me and we watched TV together while Toza went out? That's the time she was painting her face and she put on her fabulous silver evening dress. You know the strapless one and her diamonds with it. The ones her husband after grandpapa gave her. And I was so proud she was my grandmama. She looks wonderful like a million dollars. And when I told her so she let me spray some of her perfume on myself before Mr. Kincaid came. He's a tall white man and he kissed Towser's hand and then he kissed my hand and he drank with Towser and was very nice and they drove off in a big white car like what Uncle Frank drives mommy, a Benz, and Towser was looking so pleased the whole time and before Mr. Kincaid came she whispered and said her new boyfriend was coming to take her to dinner and she was so nice and handsome and rich. Tauza was looking as pleased as Eulalie did when the male van driver was touching her when they thought nobody was looking. But I was peeking through the louvers at Grandma Dell's and I saw them. But mommy, I don't know why Tauza wants me to spend more time with her, for she is never there when I go. Always rushing off to the gym and the pool and the dinners and cocktails or else she is on the phone. I love Toza so much though. She hugs me a lot and says things that makes me laugh and she gives me wonderful presents. Do you know she made Joyce bake a chocolate cake for me? And my ni And my new bracelet is so lovely. It's my birthstone, you know, mommy. You know what? Grandma Elaine, I mean Towser, says she is going to talk to you about taking me to see my cousins Jason and Maureen in Clearwater when she goes to do her Christmas shopping in Miami. Oh, mommy, can I go? You know all the girls in my class have been to Miami and you have never taken me. Mom, can we go to Disney World soon? I'm so ashamed. Everyone in school has been to Disney World and I haven't gone yet. When Toza grows out, Joyce and I sit in the den and watch TV the whole time. Except I usually fall asleep during the late show. But Joyce watches everything until TV signs off. And next morning when she is making me breakfast, she tells me all the parts that I missed. Mommy, can't we get a video? Everyone in my class has a video. She says she is getting Mr. Kincaid to give her one as a present. Toza is so much fun. Except, mommy, what does she have against my hair? And my skin. She always seems angry about it. And Joyce says grandma is sorry. I came out dark because she is almost a white lady. And I am really dark. But mommy, what is wrong with that? When I hold my hand next to Joyce, my skin is not as dark as hers. Or grandma does or daddy's even. Is dark really bad, mommy? Mommy, did you know that a whistling woman and a crowing hen are an abomination to the Lord? That's what Grandma Dell told me, 
and Pearly when Pearly was teaching me to whistle. Don't tell Grandma what I can whistle. Want to hear me? <laughs> Mommy, can you whistle? Pearly is my best friend in the country. She lives near to Grandma in this tiny house. So many of them. And all the children sleep together in one room on the floor. And Mommy, you know what? Pearly has only one pair of shoes and one good dress and her school uniform though she hardly goes to school and some old things she wears around the house that have holes in them. Can you imagine? And you should see her little brothers. Half the time they are wearing no clothes at all. Mommy, can you send Pearly some of my dresses and some of my toys but not my Barbie doll? She doesn't have any toys at all, not a single one. And Pearly is just a little older than me and she has to look after her little brothers when her mommy goes to work. She has to feed them and bathe them and change them and while she is changing the baby's nappies, her little brothers get into so much trouble and when they break things, when her mother comes home, she beats Pearly. Poor Pearly. She can balance a pan of water on her head, no, and you know, I wish I could do that. She goes to the standpipe for water and carries the pan on her head without spilling a drop. Sometimes I go with her. I borrow a pan and though it's smaller than Pearly's, I always end up spilling the water all over me and the pan gets heavier and heavier till I can hardly bear it before we get to Pearly's house. Pearly can wash clothes too. I mean real clothes, not dolly clothes. Really? Her baby brothers, nappies and things and she cooks dinner for them but the way they eat is really funny. They don't have a real kitchen or anything. She has three big rocks in the fireplace and she catches up a fire when she is ready and she has to fan it and fan it with an old basket top and there is a lot of smoke. It makes me sneeze. Then when the fire is going she puts on a big pot of water and when it is boiling she peels things and throws them in the water to cook. Yams and cocos and green bananas and that's what they eat. No meat or rice or salad or anything. Pearly uses a sharp knife just like a big person and she peels the bananas ever so fast. She makes three cuts and goes zip zip with her fingers and the banana is out of its skin and into the pot. She says you must never put bananas and yams to boil in cold water for they will get drunk and never cook. Did you know that? Once I helped her to rub up the floor dumplings but my dumplings came out so soft Pearly said they were like fla fla and she won't let me help her make dumplings again. Pearly has to do all these things and we only get to play in the evenings when her mother comes home and you can imagine mommy Pearly has never seen TV and she has never been to the movies, never mommy. Do you think Pearly could come and live with us? I could take her to the movies though I don't know who would look after her baby brothers when her mommy goes to work. You know Pearly doesn't have a father. She doesn't know where he is. I die without my daddy. Grandma then says I'm to be careful and not to spend so much time with Pearly. For Pearly is beginning to back chat and is getting very force ripe. Mommy, what is force ripe? Sometimes I play with Eulalie's baby. His name is Oral and he's fat and happy and I help to change his nappy. He likes me a lot and claps his hands when he sees me and he has two teeth already. He likes to grab hold of my hair and we have a hard time getting him to let go. Mommy, why can't I have a baby brother to play with all the time? Eulali and Irma Dean love to comb my hair and play with it. They say I am lucky to have tall hair, but Grandma there doesn't like Eulali and Irma Dean anymore. She says they are a disgraceful Jezebel lot and dry eye and bring down shame on their father and mother who try so hard at them. Sometimes my grandma talks like that and I really don't understand. When I ask her to explain, she says, cockroach no business in a fall rules. And she acts real mad as if I did something wrong and I don't know why she is so vexed sometimes and quarrels with everyone, even me. She scares me when she is vexed. You know, when Grandma Dell is really happy, when she is baking cakes and making pimenta liquor 
and orange marmalade and guava jelly. Oh, she sings and gets Emmanuel to make up a big fire out in the yard and they put on this big, big pot and we peel and we peel guava, hundreds of them. When we make stewed guava, she give me a little spoon so I can help to scoop all the seeds and I have to be real careful to do it properly and not to break the shells. Mommy, right here you have this little glass jar full of stewed guava from Grandma Del that I helped to make. Grandma gets so happy to see her kitchen full of these lovely glass jars full of marmalade and guava jelly. But you know what? Grandma just makes it and then gives it all away. Isn't that funny? And one time she baked a wedding cake and decorated it too. Three cakes in different sizes she made and then she put them one on top of the other. Grandma is so clever. She allowed me to help her stir the cake mix in the bowl, but it was so heavy I could barely move the spoon. When it was all finished, she let me use my fingers to lick out the mixing bowls. Yummy, yummy. Why don't you bake cake so I can lick out the bowls, mommy? This time I found that I had grown so much I couldn't get into the church dresses Grandma made for me last time. So she made me some new dresses and she says she will give the old ones to Pearly. Mommy, can we? Can you believe that everyone in church remembered me? And they said, What a way you grow! And how is your daddy? And how is your mommy? Till I was tired. Mommy, that is the way they talk, you know, just like Richie and the garden next door. What a way you grow. They don't speak properly the way we do, you know. Mommy, Eulali and Ermadine don't go to church or school anymore. And Ermadine says when I come back next year, she will have a little baby for me to play with too. And Eulali says she will have a new little baby. Mommy, you know what the girls in school say? They say I am the prettiest girl in school and I can be Miss Jamaica. When I am big, I'll go to the gym like you so I can keep my figure. And I must take care of my skin for even though I have excellent skin, Toza says I must always care for it. Toza spends hours before the mirror every morning caring for her skin and her new boyfriend, Mr. Samuels, is always telling her how beautiful she looks. Toza really loves that. Mr. Samuel is taking her to Mexico for the long Easter weekend and Toza is going to Miami to buy a whole new wardrobe for the trip. She says she is going to bring me all the new movies for the video. Mommy, when I am old like Grandma, will men tell me I am beautiful too? Can I have my ear relaxed as soon as I am 12, year, 12 as you promised? Will you allow me to enter Miss Jamaica when I am old enough? You know Jason likes me a lot, but he's my cousin, so he doesn't count. Mom, am I going to clear water again this Christmas to spend time with Jason and Maureen? Maureen is always fighting with me, you know, but Jason says she's jealous because she isn't pretty like me. She's fat, and she has to wear braces on her teeth. Will I ever have to wear braces? Mom, when I go to Miami, can I get a training bra? All the girls in my class are wearing them and a makeup starter kit. Mom, when are we going to get a dish?